You're listening to East Coast Groove Radio.
That is Christian Laufer. The track is called Loss. Part of his Lost EP. Out now. Hope you guys enjoy it. This is Fidel Franco, and this is East Coast Groove Radio. Uh, we're going to talk... The topic is going to be a little bit different. Usually I talk about electronic music and, and stuff like that. Uh, the scene in the Maritimes, or the scene in the East Coast of Canada, and also talk about some, some classic things. But today I'm going to talk about uh, East Coast Roof, what I usually do, uh, what I'm doing, um, and what it has become, and what I've, I've done lately, and what I've been experimenting lately. Also, I'm going to talk about um, an article I saw in Beat Portal. Uh, if you guys don't know what Beat Portal is, Beat Portal is the new site for Beatport. It, it's very cool. You should guys should check it out. Beatportal.com. Shout out to them. And uh, it's about uh, how social media is uh, dividing dance music, electronic dance music. And I'm going to talk about that because that's that's in the state we are right now with East Coast Groove. So we're going to go to that, but we're going to go with some music. Uh, this is by T.H. Moy, and this is called Save My Soul, original mix. Hope you enjoy it.
Follow us on Mixcloud at mixcloud.com slash East Coast Groove. And we're back. Uh, that was uh, T.H. Moy, Save My Soul. Uh, that's on Bit to Bit Records. Shout out to them. Now, what I've been... Lately, I, I've been slacking a little bit. I haven't wrote anything in maybe two weeks. Um, I didn't do... I did the Respect the Classic podcast, but uh, I didn't do anything new. Uh, so I will say two weeks without doing anything new. And the reason why that has been like that is because I've been thinking of how to move forward. And it's a little bit odd how I found this. Um, I was watching Arrow, which is one of my favorite TV shows. Um, I like comic books and, and sci-fi things. And uh, I, I heard a quote of uh, one of the characters that said that uh, his company was built to outlast him. And it's on the verge of a crisis. And I thought about myself like, is this something that I can build it to last? Like, if I'm not doing anything, can it still do something, even if I'm not there? Um, I started thinking about that, and I, I realized that it doesn't. If I don't, if I don't move a needle or a pen or a typewriter or or a computer, or whatever you want to call it, uh, nothing really happens on East Coast Groove. I I, I, I got, uh, in order for me to gain an o- an audience, I have to promote and and give and stuff. So. That I've been thinking about a lot, and and I come to a conclusion that I need to uh, do something bigger than myself in order for me to, you know, to to change anything. So it, it's not about me; it's about it's about what it, the the movement. So one of the things that I've been doing is trying to gain a broader audience. And uh, the first thing I started with Facebook. Uh, if you go to our Facebook page. Uh, East Coast Groove, you'll see that we have right now 837 likes. Uh, I usually don't go by likes because, I'm, like I said, I, I know a lot about computer programming. So likes doesn't mean anything in Facebook, especially because it's paid. And uh, it doesn't matter if I have a 1,000 or 3,000 fans. Uh, if I put a post uh, out of those 1,000 people, only 5% are Facebook is going to give me 5% of my 1,000 likes. Now, I would have to pay to get a broader audience or to get a better audience of it. So that's not really mean anything if you have 10,000 likes on Facebook because only 5% of those 10,000 or something, and even gets lowered, sometimes it can get lowered to 2% uh, of those people will actually see what you put on. So uh, what I have tried now, I, I made a budget of 35 American dollars to experiment to see how the the facebook likes and i'm seeing that the less money you put uh the more expensive it is for example if for every likes facebook calculated that i spend five dollars per day and every like it's 1.2 uh, it's one dollar and two cents so basically for my 35 dollars i'm probably gonna get 20 likes which is kind of outrageous uh but that's that's really much how it's going. Um, but I'm thinking of new ideas on how to make this bigger than I am. Uh, I'm, and I'm I'm wondering how would I go? Would I go with more underground methods? For example, Mixcloud. I feel that Mixcloud is a good platform that I can put stuff and and it's more towards the audience that I go to. Um, maybe should I go with them? Uh, they have a promotion package. I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna do that because I, I I'm I'm. I really don't like paying uh, for mouth-to-mouth marketing. I feel like everything should come organic. Uh, it takes more time. Uh, it's more hard work. But uh, it's usually, I think it's better. But it's something that I've been talking and, and thinking and wondering around. And if you guys have any comments, you can definitely let me know how can this be bigger than myself. How can this be more than myself so it's a question that i've been having lately uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to talk about the beat portal article and uh how does this uh connect with what i'm saying and i'm not the only one uh dance music artists are and all artists are going through this and i'm going to go and talk about this article a little bit so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go with uh, more music i'm going to go with bruno coffin and this is uh, never gonna let you this is the original mix hope you enjoy it
www.eastcoastgroove.com
Sorry about that. Uh, sometimes we do this show and uh, the microphone didn't come on, so there's a little bit of stop there, but that's okay. Now, I've been talking about this article in bportal.com. The article is uh, written by a person called Crystal Rodriguez, and uh, the article is called Pay to Play, Why Social Media Promotion is Dividing Dance Music. Now, this is a good article because it, it, it says a lot about what Facebook is doing to the music industry. Um, it says the same thing that uh, people were, you know, at first people, Facebook gave an equal opportunity to everybody. Uh, but now it's more about benefiting uh, of the artists. Uh, so if you get 25,000 followers, you used to get 500 likes and now you get 15 likes because you have to pay for it. This also tells how people are not getting into that. And uh, for a platform like mine, which is very small, it's very independent, uh, it's it's pretty much me doing everything myself. Uh, Facebook, it's a hit or miss, really. Um, I know how to tweak it a little bit, uh, so that helps me a lot. I know what uh, can drive views and cannot drive views. I know the insights. I know what makes the reach. Um, there's a lot of things that, that I know that, that Facebook can do and cannot do. But it's kind of sad because you have to play that game now. Uh, just because you need to play that game uh, in order to get your music out there. Uh, and, you know, what electronic music fans are the most digital ones. They're the most, they, they have most presence in social media. They tweet more about the music than a normal tweeter. Uh, a normal person would tweet about news or anything like that. Uh, so there is a lot going on within the music industry that, that you would need to do. Now, having that said, I'm still not sure what the best play for this platform would be if I ever wanted to become something more. Uh, I don't know if going the mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, you know, viral way or just pay for a promotion. Like I said, I just started doing this Facebook campaign. I think I'm going to give it till Monday. I, I started it on, let's see here. I started it on Friday. And by Friday, I started, yeah, Friday. So I, on Friday, I spent $3.46. And on Saturday, I spent it $5, which is what my $5 budget. And today I have spent four dollars and eighty-seven cents. The result of that is thirteen page likes. So I pretty much have spent over almost fifteen dollars, twelve dollars, give or take, and it's a dollar. Well, thirteen dollars, yeah, a dollar a follower. And the funny thing is, um, they're not going to my website they're not listening to the radio station they're on facebook so the money is for facebook and stays in facebook um uh, don't get me wrong i got nothing against facebook i think it's a it's a nice platform uh, but is this the right way that music should go that's my point is this the right way that websites blogs such as ours radio stations such as ours podcasts such as ours uh, should go this route or should they go to a more different route, like use maybe Twitter or Instagram as part of Facebook? So, I it's pretty much the same the same rules of the game. Should you, you should you start using alternative social media, uh, alternative websites, alternative methods to to drag a crowd in the internet? but out of big social media platforms. Uh, that's my, my inquiry right now. That's my dilemma right now. Should I just stay in the big platforms because that's what everybody is? Or should I go to a more, more niche platform such as you know SoundCloud, MixCloud, uh, MixCrate, and other places that are not as big as, as a platform like Facebook, but you can still find your niche market and, and do it there. Uh, but I really recommend to get at this. I mean, it, it talks about people, you know, it gives the pros and cons. It gives that, uh, you know, it's a better way to communicate because uh, there's a lot of interviews. There's a lot of tracks. There's a lot of stuff that I have gotten in the reach of social media, which 10 years ago, 
it would have been more and more it would have been harder to do um but because of social media it, it's been able to happen i get a lot of labels that i played tracks in this podcast uh cloudcast because it's i i still trying to work on that itunes thing um but uh, there's a lot of things that that i have done via platforms like facebook and twitter that i probably could not do maybe 12 15 years ago so you you know that's something that that it, it's something to think about uh i would put this i want to put this article in the link down below so if you want to read it uh, but i also want to you know i want to get it out there to all the djs and producers and and fans is social media better for dance music or is it just worse um that's something that this, it's a dilemma. It, it's all, it's definitely more for independent people, not for majors. You know, a major DJ probably won't have the issue that an independent uh, website or independent DJ or independent producer would have. But that that's a question I, I, I take out there. See if uh, if anybody's listening and and you know comment on it and see what what the opinion is and start a conversation. So we're gonna go with uh, Miss J Benza, and this is called ready this is on listen and shut records so hope you enjoy it
follow us on Twitter at East Coast Groove.
all right that was miss j bensa uh ready original mix uh before i actually said that that was that track but the track that went before that was another one by maury and the track is called undisputed so we're at the end of the show so remember if you like what you hear uh supporting the 10-minute music buy it like it support it promote it um do whatever you can to support independent music artists and uh if you like what you hear you can listen to it 24 7 at uh, ecgradio.com follow us on facebook twitter mixcloud and i'm gonna go and talk about this subject again um i'm gonna try a couple of alternatives and if you guys have any alternatives just let me know and definitely i'm, I'm into this i'll see what we can get and you know we, we're trying to i'm trying to make this um, something bigger than myself. Uh, I don't know how, but uh, I'm, I'm going to find out. So we're going to go with one last song. This is by um, Danny Beetle, and the, call, the, the track is called No Danger. So see you guys later. Oh, okay.
Follow us on Mixcloud at mixcloud.com slash East Coast Groove.